Next up on Howler for an hour, we have the Pale City. This is a... I think it's an RPG Maker game. Pretty sure it is. And it looks... odd. Official design did not look... particularly polished, but it definitely had its own look to it. This looks like a game... I'm just gonna make an early conjecture and say this looks like a game that is probably very interesting, even if it's not high budget. Let's start with the tutorial, because I have no idea why there's a tutorial button. But let's let's find out. It is dark. So hard to see in this world of memories. Those books, that trail of emptiness upon the ground. It would be wise to read all of them. It's not easy to visit this place, but perhaps it will help help a little on the journey to come. Okay. Press the directional keys to move. Vasic and explore. Vasic. Press E to interact. Press X to cancel over the menu. It's probably a RPG Maker game with those controls. So first thing you'll notice right off the bat is what is this art style? It. Oh wow. Oh. Oh, we have full. We have. Uh... Okay. So. That is a thing that you can code. You can code your RPG Maker. Is this? Is this? Yeah, it's still it's still tile based. So I think it's an RPG Maker. And he's using the diagonal coding, which I don't see that used very often. That's interesting. I don't see people use that very often. It's kind of handy, though. Often the most important detail will be hidden in the least expected place. Players interested in the full narrative experience of the Pell City are encouraged to search the environment as thoroughly as possible. Okay. I can do that. Nothing now but black and embers. There's always something to gain from interacting with those Vasic encounters, whether he speaks to them or just takes a quick glance. In addition to the important information, certain conversations will grant extra experience points. Okay, I like systems like that. Fall did a good job with that too, actually. For some reason, this gives me slight early Fallout vibes, as in before the 3D entries. Kind of has a general look that kind of makes me think that. Combat in the Pale City is about careful use of skills Vesic already has, not about leveling up or having the most powerful weapons. Vasic learned each of these skills for a reason. All will be essential if he wants to survive. Okay. Vasic must pay careful attention to his enemies. Humans require more complex strategies than monsters, and no two humans are alike. Who attacks most aggressively? Who takes the most dangerous stance? Who is most likely to heal the others? There is no way to know, other than to watch. Often, when faced with multiple opponents, the one who falls first can make all the difference. Despite all the hardship, one comfort remains. One thing that can always be controlled. Press Alt and Enter to switch between full screen and windowed mode. The comfort of full screen is the one thing we hold on to in our lives. <laughs> Vasic have encountered many opponents throughout his life, but even the weakest were still dangerous. Combat is not about aggression, it's about patience. With every attack parried, and every enemy movement observed, he accumulates TP, the opportunity to use a skill. Often defense is the best offense. On occasion, it may even be necessary to guard. So this game wants me to be def play defensively. It's a full death to charge forward, mindlessly attacking again and again, and Vasic is no fool. So this is an RPG that's going to drop consequences on you if you just hit the attack button over and over. The city is a hard place and a hungry one. Vasek has wanted new armor for many weeks now, but he knows the risks of such a purchase. He must be careful when he spends money, or soon he may have nothing left. I'm getting a real hardcore vibe to this, like, you gotta play just you gotta play carefully, or you might screw yourself over. The thing is, though, that's fine, because the game is, like, fucking telling you about it and gave you a tutorial to explain it. So I have no issue with that. It's only when it's dropped on the play unexpectedly that it's really a problem. The history of the platform is so long this bookshelf can never do justice to it. It is a world of many questions. Perhaps the people who wrote those books care to ask them, but Vasek does not. No one knows why, millions of years ago, the platform rose up out of the water. But here it stands, alone, a gnarled sphere of rock jutting out above the dark ocean. No one knows who condemned humans to life in this miserable city. With only themselves for company. Life is already hard enough. Vasek does not care to ask impossible questions. Did I start the timer? I think I did. Also, gonna note, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna congratulate the author on this. Uh, this writing is really solid. Like a lot of RPG Maker games, you'll see on Steam stuff, and a lot of games in general on my Haller for an hour. You've probably noticed this if you've watched a number of them. English is hard for people, and sometimes that's because you know foreign language. You know, they live somewhere else that doesn't speak uh, English as their first language, and that's understandable. That being said, you should still get an English proofreader, uh, I feel, if you're selling a game. Um, but also, even people from English-speaking countries sometimes do not have the best grasp of proper grammar, 
and spelling mistakes and such. Basically, they do, not, they do not revise their scripts and such. This author clearly cares about, well, developer, but also author, because he's writing well, so I'll call him an author, uh, clearly cares about what he's writing, which is appreciated. The history of the platform is so long, this bookshelf, oh, it's, it's the same, it's the other bookshelf. The writing is not only, like, not only is it good in grammar and such, but uh, it's also competently written as far as structure, and it's just interesting to read. It's good, it's good writing. Every place has its own fill, its own texture. Vasek must pay close attention not only to what he sees, but also what he hears. Use of headphones is strongly recommended. Well, I'm using them. Maybe you guys should too, if you're not. I just turned my sound up a little bit since they said that. In such a dangerous world, one must do all they can to ensure nothing is lost. Vasek's progress can be saved at any time from the menu. That's good to know. There's Vasek! <laughs> Again, Visually speaking, this game doesn't is not the best looker, but it has its own style, so I dig it. Vasek cannot stand the sight of his own face in the mirror. What could be worse than to gaze upon himself? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Generic 3D models. Oh no, no actually, he, honestly, it's not the worst model. <laughs> There's nothing so bitter as lingering memories. Depends on the memory. Those twilight years, they were not a time of light. No, they were the last pain ga great gasp of slowly dying time. Slowly dying time. <laughs> what a luxury it would be to die of something so mundane as a lack of sleep. There's nothing more to be accomplished here once Vasek has read the books. No, for that he must go out into the world. Here it lies in shadow, but never forgotten. This book? That's a shadowy book, I guess. A sports drink? Can I take it? Okay. Can't read that book for some reason. Oh, wait, no, I can. This place. Vasek does not know if he could bear to stand here again. So much time, so much of himself, now lost in unbearable darkness. And then he listened to Linkin Park. <laughs> and did, did, got his hair dyed black. Um, I guess we're done here. Leave this place. Yes, it is time. All right, I'm already kind of intrigued by this. The tutorial itself introduce a lot of uh, ideas and concepts I don't see very often put together into an RPG. Again, not much of a looker. This tile set is, for instance, kind of bland. But let's see where this goes. It's quiet. Lifetimes ago, this was the final resting place of the sorcerer, a castle sunken entirely beneath the surface of the platform. He lived his last days here in the cold silence. One man, alone in a building large enough to hold hundreds. It seems like an unpleasant kind of life. Perhaps there would be more it would be someone in it now, if only the entrance were not so far underground. Again, I might be overselling this game. I don't know if this is any good or not. But I, I get good vibes from certain qualities of this. The third piece of the golem should be ahead. Oh, we're building our own golem? That sounds pretty great. What happens if I just go back though? Okay. I mean, I kind of expected that. All right, what do we have? We have no items. We have no weapons. We have no... Wait, third piece of the golem. Shouldn't we have, like, two pieces then? Okay. Skills? Let's see. Parry. Raise chance to evade physical attacks for one turn. Gain two PP. Most attack of guard. Defensive stat. Stat. That's, oh, okay. Because there's also the defensive stance. Drastically increase attack, decrease attack, serialize the defense, until late of battle, slight bonus evasion of magic evasion, cancels previous stance. Defensive stance, doubles attack but halves damage defense until end of battle, cancels previous stats. Grants positioning and extra attack for one or occasionally two turns. Okay. So I get it. We're gonna switch up our stances as the time is right. Having our offense or defense, but raising the opposite stat when we need it. I get it. We start at level twenty three. Yeah, we're level twenty that's an odd starting level. Um, uh, sweep. Attacks all enemies for slightly increased decreased damage, no TP cane, no critical. Okay, that doesn't so that's doesn't doesn't cost T T, but it also doesn't gain us TP, so sweep is kind of okay. So this this fairy is better with the defensive stat stance and a guard. Oh. I bet they both cause bonuses, guardian and defensive stat stance. Triple arm is a weaker attack with yeah, so lowers accuracy, no TP gain. So parry is a way to gain TP. Small chicks are causing bleed. Guard break. Create an opening. Extremely high rate of critical for one or occasionally two turns. Only works on opponents of weapons. Less effective than enemies with shields. Okay. 
Lunge, strong for, strong attack for high damage. Always first, never misses, no critical. So that's a very reliable attack, always first. Um, oh, always first, never misses. That's a good way to finish off an enemy without risking anything. Wound, full strength attack that lowers any defense, can cause severe, causes severe, just does, just causes bleeding, okay. And bleeding is probably like a debuff that causes damage over time. All right, and then Killing Blow, that's lethal strike, extreme damage, guaranteed severe bleeding, 75% chance of bringing absolutely any enemy to one HP. Very powerful, cost 11 TP. Okay. And, oh, we do have some equipment, all right. We have Vasic Sword, it's just, which is described as Vasic Sword. <laughs> we have his armor, lightweight and made with good leather, leather shirt. That's not much, but okay, it will do. All right, we are allowed to save anywhere though, so if the game is brutal, but it lets us, what's debug? I just have access to debug options. Interesting. We could just... We could, we could probably just warp to the end of the game. Wow, okay. Um, that's a, kind of interesting to just give me the debug warp options, but okay. Um, I'm not going to do that. But since we can save anywhere, I don't really care if it's hard, because that means I could save, try a battle if I suck. It's okay. Let's see what we got. A pale woman stands beside the fire. Katazia. Vasic's partner in retrieving the pieces of the golem. You're slow, Vasic. I've been waiting. Why did you go on alone? You could have taken the fragment already by now. I'm surprised. All this time, you seemed eager enough to have them for yourself. That's so. That's not true, Vasic. Two weeks together, you're still so cruel. We should never have taken this job. It's this place. It's too dangerous. Too old. We found what we found the first two pieces of the golem, but I'm scared of what might happen when we find the third. I don't trust him, the mage who hired us. Perhaps he doesn't want us to come back. You mean you're worried because there might be spells in place to guard it? It's not just that. I never knew a place like this could exist. It was your idea to go ahead alone, not mine. Yes, and I now regret it. The academy is so large, so powerful. It seems they could send their own men instead of us. Apparently they can't. That suits me well enough. We both need the work, it sounds like. Sorcerer who made the golem. He lived here, I take it. Lifetimes ago, when he fled the surface, he found this empty place and haunted it. Was he a ghost then? Yes, if you can call that living. If he was alive, then he wasn't haunting it. He must have been unusually powerful, the sorcerer. That's why the Academy wants the golem he created. I hadn't thought of it. The mages aren't like us. They don't care about things that make sense. <laughs> two plus two doesn't make five for them. <laughs> yes, I know what I said. Yes, I suppose you could put it that way. How long were you waiting for? Too long, but I found this pit to make a fire. Seems like an evil place to relax. This conversation's really going on for a while. Well, I thought this place was empty. We both did. Now I'm not so sure. That's why I'd like you to do what we came for. But I'd like to do what we came for and go. Like I said, I'm not going on. I'll see you in the sink when you get back. Why? I'm afraid of the golem. The longer we do this, and you should be too. That's kind of an oddly st st structure. Also, the game desire didn't want to have two party members at this time. It seems better just to stay here and wait. Alright, bye. <laughs> we have nothing to respond to that, okay. What are you waiting for? Get on with it. Such a lonely, isolated flame burning on dry rock. How's it burning on dry rock? It's a very impressive fire making skill she has if she can just go like, I have rocks, now I have a fire. Because I burned the rocks. Like, what? <laughs> Long ago, before the sorcerer came, they say this castle was a stronghold of a terrible king. No punctuation. Oh, come on, developer. You're, sli you're slipping here. I said you I was complimenting your grammar earlier and everything. Within its walls, many toiled. He, granted, it, when you write in a ton of text, it's easy to like, forget a period. He was obsessed with crystals of light with the crystals of light that grow in the tunnels beneath the surface of the platform. Amidst the corpses of children who never found their way to the surface. What were they doing down there, the children, that is? According to the stories, he ate the crystals until at last his skin glowed as bright as a crystal itself. After his death, the castle was left empty for a very long time. It would take a certain kind of man to live in this place, in pursuit of a certain kind of solitude. There should be a switch somewhere on the back wall. Still a few bits of ash. Long ago, this crystal seems to contain some form of energy. A text detailing alchemical transformations. Ooh, transformations, you say. 
Uh, we're all about that here. What kind of hideous creature is this? Looks like a demon. An open book suspended on its pedestal. The words have become unreadable the passing time. That dub, dead person. This appears to be the remains of the, sor of the sorcerer. Oh, there he is. It makes no sense. The corpse should have been absorbed in the platform long ago. What? That's weird logic. Why didn't the floor eat him? That's weird. <laughs> the pages are burned through the center. Unreadable. Conveniently, all these books are unreadable. Except for this one. The sunken king carved stark markings across his face. He stuck needles in his eyes until they bled. This doesn't appear to be a historical text. Perhaps the sorcerer wrote it himself. The bookshelf has been emptied. Whether by the sorcerer or someone else is unclear. Hmm. Oh, I see it. I'm just going to save every room because I expect to fight. And the game apparently wants to do hard fights. The third piece of the golem is embedded in the obelisk. This is clearly absorption was this finished. Since me and the man for the academy a few weeks ago, Vasic has collected two already, although those have been much easier to locate. The sorcerer must have been very careful to hide them after his death. If the man for the academy knows the reason, he said nothing about it. It's time to leave. There is nothing more to find here. I do have to say, though, this tile set is quite painful in the eyes, I will be honest. I don't know how it's... This is why you need a lot... Of, this is why you need more map tiles than just a few. You need you need enough map tiles to break up the monotony of a location. Oh, she's gone. Okay, time to drop another save. I don't know. I keep expecting you to fight. Okay, that's actually a good time to do it. A slight sound. There's someone standing there in the darkness. Vasek speaks softly into the quiet. I hear you, Katazia. Come out. <laughs> Dar, you caught my invisibility spell. You meant to stab me in the back as I passed and take the piece for yourself. Of course not. I was just waiting for you in the darkness, as a friend does. Of course. We should go. It's dangerous here. There are monsters. I'm not sure where they came from. Yes, we should go. It's dangerous after all. I found my own way. Good luck, Vasek. I feel like you said that sarcastically. Like, yes, it's dangerous because you're here. <laughs> Did the sorcerer have, I assume you said scorch, I assume you meant scorch marks, but maybe it's starch marks if he was cooking. <laughs> it's as she said, there's a cold silence in the air. I'll go on ahead so I can try to backstab you again. Thanks, bye. Oh, hi there. Oh, we're doing a crow trigger thing where there's no real battle transition. We're just going, oh, that's kind of cool, actually. I like that. All right, cool. Um, let's, all right, then let's fight. <laughs> with, I mean, do I want to? I guess I should start with a defensive stance, right? <laughs> Whack. <laughs> it's just I'm just laughing because those are those are generic RPG uh, thwack sounds, and it's kind of funny to hear them. Oh, by the way, uh, for those wondering, I'm going to try with shifted you know, the RPG Maker game I'm developing. I'm gonna try to use non-stock side effects. It's a little more tedious to get my own, but eh, it makes the game stand out. Because when you hear, when you're a developer of RPG Maker games and you've been a hobbyist developer for such for many years, uh, it it gets it takes you out when you hear those sound effects. It takes you out of the game you're playing <laughs> if you hear them um, after a while, because it's just it's the default RPG Maker sound effects. Like, there's nothing wrong with them; perfectly serviceable. It's just so I won't hold it against the game because it's hard to get your own sound effects, but. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. So I, uh, I I guarded. Okay. So let's see. We're we're gonna we're gonna parry and ga gather TP for a while. And now I'm bleeding. Was that a good decision? I'm not sure. Let's try to lower their accuracy. That's better. Much better. Let's cripple them too. Let's, let's fucking cripple these bee holes. What the fuck's a bee hole? It's a bee hole! Or a bee hole? Bull? Stupid bee holes. They're like a holes, but worse. Because they're B rather than A. <laughs> Alright, now they're both crippled, uh, I think. So, we can just. I mean, I can keep getting TP and then, like, lunge at them. They're crippled. Oh, they lost a the cripple. They lost a the cripple, okay. Their buttholes. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Um, or parry. 
Did a good job dodging, but bleeding is fucking killing me, so that's not great. Um, all right, let's change our stance. The problem with switching stance is that look at that. I'm taking more damage now. The problem with switching stance is that you have to switch stance. Like if I went to aggressive stance, I'm having my defense and then letting the enemies attack me, and then I could take advantage of the aggressive stance. So it's kind of a little bit risky. Um, we're gonna lunge. Uh huh. Oh, I get two attacks apparently. I lunge that. Oh, it's not dead. It's okay, it's almost dead. Sometimes we get two attacks in aggressive stance. That's neat. I'm fine. I beat him. Bee holes. A common familiar for sorcerers, even now. Sorcerers love their bee holes. <laughs> there will be more fine along the way. I- oh, I get, oh, okay, so it's- Alright, so basically every fight is a chance to die, but the game heals you after the fight. Okay, I see how the game wants to handle this, alright. I gotcha, I gotcha. Is there just an alphabetical list of different holes? I think you way over- well, I wanted to try the fucking mechanic the game provided. It was good that I- honestly, here's the thing though, it's good for me to test out the, the mechanics on enemies that aren't that bad, because then when I run to enemies that are bad, I already know what I'm doing, you know? Also, yes, I've seen this concept before. Basically having an RPG where every fight is, like, hard, but you heal after every fight. I like that concept. It basically makes every fight kind of like its own mini-boss, but is fair about it, because once you beat it, you heal. You know, you're not get stuck in a sit. Because I was wondering, like, okay, am I gonna be at like one fourth health and bleeding still for the next fight? No, it heals you, so that's nice. A healing scroll. These are rare and take effect instantly rather than gradually over time. Best not to use it carelessly. Another may not appear for a very long time, if ever. Okay. But yeah, honestly, testing mechanics out on an easy fight is definitely the way to go in an RPG. Like, that's just a good way to learn mechanics in an RPG. Like, that's just a good idea. Alright, it's like, just there. Yeah, the only- here's- here's the reason that shifted- I- I'm so glad I have a good tile artist that's willing to make varied tiles. Because when you only- here's- let me point this out, I can actually tell you it's from the tile map. The wall is made up of two tile types. There's the top part- okay, three types. There's the top part, at the top, the top wall portion. There's the stonework along the wall, and then there seems to be stonework at the edge. So it looks like he kind of mix and match tile sets because if you look at the stonework on the right side of the wall here and you compare it to the ones on the left side of the wall here, you notice they're actually not the same. They're not the same. This one's more crumbly and this one's more like new, I guess is the way to put it. So these don't actually match up. So it's very clear to me this developer didn't was not a graphical artist and probably took some tile sets from somewhere. Which I'm not going to hold it against them because not everybody's an artist. It's, it's understandable. It's probably a one-man project. But, uh, and then you got the ground here, like, instead of, the, beyond the borders around the border of the, uh, ground, the ground is only one tile. And it's a very busy tile, it's a very busy, highly textured tile, so if you layer this highly textured tile over and over and over and over again, it becomes very busy for the eyes. So, this is all graphical design shit. That's why it's not great. Because it's a very busy tile, and it's not broken up by anything. It's, it, if you had this busy tile here and there, that wouldn't be so bad. But since it's used so heavily, well, yeah. Oh, that's cute. Is this stairs? Oh, this is cute. He used wall textures. He, okay, so he copied the wall textures into a different slot in the map, map set and made them traversable to pretend they're stairs. That's that's actually kind of adorable. Basically, he used the wall tops and floor. Like he used yeah, he used this tile and he used the wall top tile to make stairs. That's. I mean, that's really janky, but kind of cute, honestly. <laughs> There's a dragon there, I'll fight that in a second. It's over here. It's probably this path. Alright, there's that. Alright, I'm just gonna fight the dragon, whatever. I mean, you know what? It's, you're working with your limitations. You're working, you're figuring out creative solutions to your limitations. It's, it's you know. They look like a- oh, it's not- Alright, I'm gonna fight an Anther Dragon. Whose first Sona is this? Um, Alright, we're gonna do the same thing as before, because it did work. <coughs> so I'm gonna have defensive stance. I'm gonna immediately cripple arm. This time. There we go. And he's bleeding me. Of course he is. Now we're gonna parry a bunch. Oh, stop hitting me. I crippled your fucking arm, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> 
Cool. Now I evade once he's not crippled anymore. Okay. <laughs> It's not dead. Uh, just keep hitting it. I hope it dies. Okay, it's dead. <laughs> I think I found my strategy. Defensive stance, cripple arm, parry, 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 lunge, lunge. A, a bike key. An old demon and a peculiar one. There'll be two more. They always come in threes. That's an interesting rule they have. Must kill whole family. <laughs> Mom, dad, and son. <laughs> Probably should have saved. An unpleasant place. Prisoners are no doubt held here. Their backs pressed against the walls. Their faces fade into an endless kind of time. There's a lingering sense of decay, of presence lost. That seems like an awful kind of life. An unbearable end to existence. This game... I don't know why this game is appealing to me, but it really is. Even though it has its issues. <laughs> Iraq used to store weapons meant not for combat for the prisoners. But they're too old. The blades are rusty and twist of age. Even after so long, some trace remains. It's strange to take from this dead place, but not entirely unpleasant. Received crystallized hand. Oh, okay. What's that do? Is that equip it? No. Maybe? What's it do? It's, uh, oh, it's not a... It's not a combat item. It's not a key item. It's just... Okay, that's kind of weird. So it's in the items list. But when I select categories, it's not in the items list. That's... Hmm. So basically, it's not a combat item, it's not a key item, it's another type of item that doesn't get to show up when I go in the category view. Alright. That's... Well, I have it, though, so... Oh, by the way, look at my money. I have zero triangle PX. Good to know. <laughs> Plot item like a key? Probably. Though, it's kind of weird it wouldn't show up in, you know, key items, given it might be a key of sorts, which is an item as well, which indicates it's a key item. <laughs> oh, there we go. Here's another one. All right, well, we know what to do. Defensive stance. Good. Uh, cripple arm. I missed. He also missed, so I guess it was fine. Good. Now that I've crippled his arm, he'll start hitting me, because that's how that works. You know, you lower your fence and then they can start hanging you. That's how that's how games work. I probably could skip the cripple arm step and probably still be fine, but you know. Also, I just I appreciate one thing. The enemy has a I'm almost dead state. Do you notice that? That that the Bayaki was like crouching down. I wonder actually if did he make these? I feel like he made some sp hmm. Now here's the thing. I really feel like that the the main character sprite as well as the enemy sprites, I feel like the developer probably made those himself. And I say that because they seem to fit really well in the game, and there's also those extra sprites for their weakened states. I, he may have gone somewhere, but it does seem like the aesthetic is matching very well with these details, so I feel like he probably made them himself, maybe? Which also perplexes me, then. Did he make the tile set? Maybe he made the tile set. Maybe he just didn't want to make that many tiles. I don't know. Not sure. Um... Let's see. Maybe sign itself for money. Best hand to have. Maybe it could be. It could be a thinner item. Yeah. Maybe it's the fact the man means your hand is crystallized. Uh, I stuck my hand in a pot, tried to get an item. I got a crystallized hand out of it, and it wasn't an item. It's just my hand afterwards. <laughs> also, using the wall textures to make the stone fencing. Yes. Wait, what? Stone fencing where? I oh, hold on. The sprite, like the. I like the. I honestly like the enemy and character sprites, though they are a little bit. I guess what's the best word? Dirty? Muddy? But not in a bad sense of the word. It's more like Fallout 1 and 2's sprites. If you've ever played Fallout 1 and 2, they, everything has a real dirty appearance, but it really works with the aesthetic. A death pit. This is where they threw the bodies into the water. The surface is possessed of a certain humbling silence. It is somehow ponderous to stare and think of the corpses. It gives a sense of time, a sense of perspective. Mine increased by one. There it is, the final step. Let's walk down. I uh, So basically, yeah, observe shit to get, like, experience and stuff. Okay, cool. Works for me. 
The ledge lips. <laughs> the ledge lips. Um, the ledge lips. Stone textures to make the stone fencing. The, like this, like the lips of this here. Uh, he's using, no, it's just, this is part of the ground edge texture, I think. Also, I don't know where I'm going. Just kind of thinking about that statement. <clears throat> All right, so we can go down there. We can go up here. Let's go. Let's go up this way. There's a sense of terrible power beyond this point. So maybe best to pause a moment to prepare. Continue. Uh, no. Thanks for letting me know. I'll go this way first. Terrible power. All right then. Hello, Battle Wolf. That's fine, dude. Welcome. Only darkness ahead. Sure. <laughs> Doesn't really look like it. It's not far now. Oh, is that the way forward? Okay, so this is an optional fight, isn't it? All right, optional fight. Oh, I see battle. I understand. Oh, is that the is that the third one? It's bigger. I see that's another bike. Yeah, it's just bigger. More like by a keter. See what what's it called? That's a nigal. That's a ni na <clears throat> Nilogas, Nilogas, probably. Look, it's got, it's not, it's a Dur, not named Dur. Pretty much. All right, Cripple R. Let's try the same strategy, see how it goes. I did damage that time. Ow, my face. Wait, I, I didn't go defensive. Whoops. <laughs> Forgot to. <laughs> that might have cost me. Um, It's fine. Oh, fuck me. Actually, it doesn't seem to matter that much. I'm just trying to like fucking gain some TP, yo. Dude, thanks. Okay. I'm gonna fucking get wrecked right here. Oh wow, okay, apparently not. Alright, lunge. Actually, I could also Hmm. Fuck. Let's go all in. It's gotta be close, right? Uh oh. Just fucking go for it. Go for it, man. It. <laughs> the game over the game over picture does not fit properly to the game's window <laughs> why is that <laughs> all right um all right i'm gonna hmm it's not game over image but it doesn't seem to fit for some reason i don't it is stock though yes that is stock but why is it not fitting <laughs> That's a mystery to me. I'm not sure why. <laughs> All right. Um, let's try doing something really risky. We're going to cripple arm. It says it doesn't seem to matter if I parry or not. I'm not even going to worry about it. Or, I mean, I'm not even going to switch stance. I'm just going to parry and hope for the best here. Because it doesn't seem like defensive stance really lowers the damage I'm taking. He just upped his attack. Hmm. I have a plan, but I might die doing it. I'm gonna parry just a little bit. Okay, now I'm done parrying. Oh, that was some good misses. Good offensive stance. Fuck my face. All right. Um. No, not stances. Lunge. Lunge. Don't die! Don't die! Don't die! Oh fuck! I need. This is all RNG, by the way. I just need him to miss. I have a. I have a plan, but I just need him to miss. Really, it's all about RNG for this one. I just need him to miss. I'll cripple his arm, keep his arm crippled, and hope for the best. What does wound do? It causes bleeding over time. Which is cool, but I need him to die fast. Just like, let's change stance that can gets 50 damage. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. Yeah, we have to, we have to cripple arm. Oh, a critical. Too bad it happened on attack that doesn't really do damage, but, you know. And then when his cripple arm wears off, I need to... It doesn't seem to affect the... See, they're wore off, so we're going to cripple him again. And we're just relying on... We're just... He's focusing. That's fine. Good. This is all RNG, yo. I can use my healing item, but you know how I am. The game said it was rare, and you know what you do with rare items in RPGs? Like, this is a max fucking revive of the whole party. I can't use this. I got to save for later. You know, like, yeah, this is a hard fight, but there'll be a harder one. You know that logic, right? <laughs> I, I'm very, very bad about that. I'm very bad about the, well, this might be important to use for later. 
sort of attitude. <laughs> All right. We're doing good so far. Oh, fuck. Okay, well, almost. Just a bit more. Okay, uh, I think I'll switch stances and hope for not that here. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, he was doing less damage for some reason, so that, I guess that's fine. Say the rare until becomes common and useless. Yes, well, I... <laughs> I think if I, here's the thing, I want to do four lunges. If I can get RNG to work for me enough so I can get four lunges out, I think I'll be good. Granted, I'm going to actually try something on this run. This is going to be incredibly fucking risky. I'm going to cripple his arm. Here's a really risky idea. If offensive stance sometimes gives me extra turns, that means I could technically parry more often. So we're going to switch to offensive stance and then see if we get more than one parry. Yeah, see, look at that. So you look at that, and get more. Now I can get the TP faster. It's a risky. It's a risky strategy, but fuck, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> that cripple arm stayed stay in effect very long at that time. It seems like how long cripple arm lasts also is kind of RNG based. Okay, I think that's a good strategy though. We're just gonna rely. On, we're just gonna cripple him. Aggressive stance, and then use that to parry a whole fuck ton, and then lunge a bunch. I could lead off of a bleed. Double parry didn't seem to work. Well, it's all RNG on golf. It's all RNG. Uh, I, let's see here, actually. Oh, never mind. Defensive stance does increase evasion slightly. So actually, there might be more of a value to going defensive after all. Never mind. <coughs> I'm really annoyed how lowering accuracy by defensive stancing and also lowering accuracy by cripple arm and I still get hit fairly often. It's kind of annoying, but oh well. It's up for the best. Ow, it's not the best. Ow, stop it. Your arm is fucking crippled. P please pay attention. Oh, fuck me. I'm bleeding. Well, I'm gonna die. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Wait, can bleeding kill you or? All right, if it's... I'm dead here. I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. All right, lunge him. Lunge him a bunch. If I got a critical with the oh wow, I'm not dead. Um, keep lunging. Go. Oh my god. Okay, lunch. How are you not? How are you still alive? I have lunged you four times. This actually would be a pretty good time to, you know, fuck it. That didn't even full hit. Okay, whatever. Just start attacking. Hope for the best. It's gotta be close, right? It's gotta be fucking close at this point. Please die. I just criticaled you and everything. Please die. I fucking, I fucking. <laughs> I got so much health. I was doing really good there. That thing has so much health. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it have? Okay, maybe you come back later for this guy. Maybe that's the trick, right? Let's go. Let's just leave. Maybe you come back. I don't know. Like this game's not clear to me as far as can I come back to an area later? He wasn't even limping. You know, like limping, which indicates low health. <laughs> oh, okay. So mm, this doesn't look too bad. I'll, I'll defensive. <laughs> Killing blow, 75% chance of bringing absolutely any of Oh, you know what, actually, good point. I'm just gonna attack randomly and to die. I wanna try this now. You gave me a thought. We could play, pray to the RNG gods and see what happens. Well, I do like no damage to this thing. It's weird. They're I might win by doing this strategy if the RNG keeps being nice to me. <laughs> I mean, the guy is bleeding. Eventually, he's gonna die. Oh, for fuck's sake! Okay, you know what? Let's just let's just parry it up a bunch. Wait, did I gain TP by attacking? Yeah, killing blow says absolutely any enemy. So it doesn't matter what the enemy is or if they're a boss or whatever. Absolutely any enemy, any enemy will apparently. 
potentially fall to that attack. So let's try let's try lunge let's just try lunging or let's try using killing blow on that guy. Not right now though, I'm gonna I'm gonna lunge a bunch. Okay, that guy's dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's try that out. Let's try killing blowing him. That sounds like fun. Honestly, I, I think it's inevitable that I would win doing that. It's just the problem is the cost of it. Check it out. That's 20 TP. That 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 means I gotta either do this. I either got to parry ten times the defensive stance. Or parry as low as five times an aggressive stance. Also, I broke the game slightly. Weird. There's an abscess, a break in space. It will persist only for a moment, then it will be gone. Uh, so I broke the encounter. <laughs> oh man, that was, uh, okay, so let me explain what just happened there, if anybody's confused. The developer did not, did not do a very simple thing. When you give the player a prompt of, do you want to continue? If you, if, if you want the player to have that prompt, to activate that battle or whatever, if they say no, Make sure to make the player automatically step back one. <laughs> that way, if they try to go forward, they're going to hit that prompt again. They didn't do that here. So it looks like what I'm able to do is apparently go to a new area that... Oh. Uh-oh. I think I broke something here. All right, let's just reload. I have a bad feeling that I broke whatever the fuck they wanted me to do. I'm not going to change the... Uh... I think I broke some sort of uh, event there. So let's just uh, reload so it's not broken. Yeah, okay. It's not broken. Good. Let's make it sure. A very, very basic mistake the developer made on this. So anyways, I could skip that encounter, but why would I want to do that? Let's, let's try our strategy. So we're gonna, we're gonna go for the defensive strategy and parry in 10 times and hoping that we don't die. <clears throat> so we'll see. Does F12 work? Probably. Most RPG Maker games, it'll work. Also, I like how he shrinks when we get into battle. Boop. Smaller. All right. Uh, all right. So yeah, we just gotta cripple this cripple's arm, N or, or not. Let's try again. That's better. Okay. Now we need to parry a whole fuck ton until we get twenty TP. Oh, for fuck's sake, we're having really bad. We're having really bad luck on cripple arm landing, but he's not hitting me either. He, he hits right here. Yep. <laughs> look, game, I know, I look, I know how fate does shit. The moment I say something, it's gonna stop happening. Oh, for fuck's sake, we're getting really bad crit, crit, like, cripple chance here. There. Again, he hits me when I'm fucking... I really should just keep parrying, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just rely on... Yeah. Okay, one more. Don't hit me. Thank you. Okay. Well, that wasn't... Yeah, we're done. Just wait for him to kill me. There it is. Actually, I could have 12 probably as well. Um... Maybe ignore the cripple doesn't do that much. It's kind of wasted my time. Bleed doesn't kill you. It did say no. That was seventy nine damage. I'm pretty sure if it did the damage, it would display a number higher than seventy nine. I saw one hundred eighty pop up. Well, I've done way more than one hundred eighty to this guy, and nothing happened. So. Yeah, never mind. Cripple arm. I'm just gonna parry. A wise decision. Maybe I also need a little TP for lunge, though, now I think about it. Winning early would have been okay. Well, if it's a percentile based damage, it, may, it would not make that huge a difference, actually. Alright, killing blow? See, that's 52. I don't think that was enough. Personally. No 
gonna try something. <laughs> Dead here. Wait. Oh shit, you're right. He's taking damage over time. Get him. Get him dead. Get him hit by shit. I don't... Mm. Yay! <laughs> I'm conf Okay, so that's really weird how Killing Blow works, but I'll take it. <laughs> so wait, Killing Blow does fuck tons bleed. So basically, even if I'm not getting that 75%, it still does fuck tons of damage, I guess. Alright, cool. I wasn't even paying attention to the bleed damage because I just assumed it was like, you know, the normal bleed damage. I did not realize it was like hyper bleed. I didn't realize it was gaping wounds, splashing out, gushing out blood like a geyser kind of bleeding. <laughs> but apparently it was. Yeah, it's 20. Oh, I did a weird walk. All right. Did it! Severe bleeding. I guess that's severe. There's Okay, so... Step forward in the darkness. Hello. A thunder scroll. Many could go lifetimes without seeing an item so powerful or so valuable. But you best use it carefully. Finding a single scroll is rare. Finding another is more unlikely still. So all that work for a thunder scroll, huh? I bet that's like really good then. It does extreme thunder damage to all enemies. That's probably like an insta kill, more or less. Alright, good to know. Oh, that's why there was an obelisk there. Three different levels. Okay, it's like Pokemon. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like toxic as shit. Or it's as good as your amazing heal of half health. Which really, considering how much that scroll is played up, like, these scroll, these healing scrolls are very uncommon. You best use it carefully. It's like, it does half a, half a heal. Like, okay, that's not really that impressive. I was expecting a full heal. But, alright. This is a very long and pointless path. Are we gonna go like to the new new area, you think? Leave this place, sure. What's the world map look like? It's a surprise, but after all this, it will actually be nice to see Sink again. I guess you could say he's got a sinking feeling. <laughs> that is indeed. Hell City. A game by Kyle Munts. Yeah, I expected another back. I expected another backstab attempt myself. Well, here we are. It's done. This this floor tile is also too busy. Holy shit. Excellent! You'll be paid, paid accordingly, as agreed. Okay, thank you, Arabian person. Um, Vasek gives the Shrouded Man the fragment. I thought it was a girl. Knowing the lift, the long-fingered hand reaches out to take it. With this, we have completed the Golem's torso. Now we need only the fourth piece. I've assembled the body elsewhere, although that is none of your concern. I had the legs of pelvis to begin with, but with your aid, I only now require the head. Do you know where it's at? Unfortunately, I do not. However, I'm certain it will... It is somewhere in the sink. I'll have the location soon, I hope. Return soon, and I will give it to you. Vasek nods and leaves the Shroud Man to his business. Although, as he turns, he spots Katazia down the bar. I saw I didn't pay you. Suppose not. It only makes sense. All I did was make a fire. Why don't you get the piece yourself? I was worried it was trapped, like you said. A sorcerer's laboratory is rarely a safe place. I saw his corpse on the floor inside. At least I think it was his. He wasn't such an imposing man. But he must have been very dangerous when he was still alive. Would you have killed me if I had tried to take the piece from you? I would have done my best. Well, in that case, it's good that I didn't. Like I said, I was just waiting for you. If I had actually been backstabbing you, which I wasn't, by the way, would you have killed me? I wasn't doing that, though. But just, in hypothetically. <laughs> you said you needed the money badly. Why? We all need money, but you seem to have some reason in particular. I have my reasons. That doesn't mean I'll give them to you. Of course. Let's pretend I never asked. Are you still going to look for the fourth piece? Perhaps. There are other matters I need to attend to. I understand. There are always other matters to be attended to. There certainly are. What is this conversation? Why are we talking to you? You're a backstabber. Well, that's enough for now. Come back if you like to talk. This feels like a nice time for a drink. Well, I could backstab you. I may as well talk to you. 
Fantastic. Some, oh, I'm not surprised to get back. It's not unusual to meet someone who adept in magic, and yet you try to backstab him rather than use a spell. Wes, well, I'm a strange woman. I suppose you have to know that by now. Were you trained? There are teachers here. It's no secret there are mages all across the platform, not just at the academy. That's not what I asked. I never said that I would answer your questions. I've heard you are a corpse hunter for the House of Life. It's not such a bad life. I've been a lot of things. So, is that like a zombie hunter? As have I. I'd appreciate it if you didn't question me about them. You must know, I don't take well to treachery. If you do, I wouldn't expect you to be any different. That proves little problem, I suppose, with a dagger in their backs. I'm very quick. <laughs> she just admitted it, right there, as I noticed. I once killed a friend who tried to steal from me. And we are not friends. I do as a must. Yes, and so will I. This tension. I've never seen a mage wield a two-handed sword. It's like a staff, so I suppose I'm not the best swordsman. Still, it's nice to have. And so, then why not use a staff? A staff isn't as sharp. I would have thought you could guess that on your own. Leave her to a drink. You look like a tough one, but you must remember that in battle, what matters most is using strategy, not just attacking. My strategy is hopefully the RNG causes the enemy to miss. It's like in the stories. In a real fight, what matters is watching your opponent and using all your skills, even, even the ones that might not be seem useful first. What do you know about fighting? Not much, and I wouldn't claim to know more, but if you'd like to meet someone who does, look for the battle stage of the arena. No matter how experienced you are, there might be something I can teach you. Here you'll speak to anyone that comes who comes for free. Okay. Michael glares. Well, fuck you too, Michael. Or Michelle. Fuck you too, Michelle. I don't even know who you are, but fuck you. Tell me about golems, if I must. I suppose it is wise for you to know. There are a few different varieties of golems, all in essence fundamentally similar to fundamentally different things, even if the final product is similar. The first and most common variety, the life of the golem comes with the material of which it is built. All the material, as all the material on upper levels of the platform is made of corpse matter, this is only natural. What was once alive can easily be made to live again, for some traces of life remain in it still, even if it is a very different kind of life. In this case, as the others, the existence of the golem derives from the, its essence, from the property of life as manifest within the materials used to create it. The material animates itself, and the role of the sorcerer is to simply make it possible for the material to do so. As the process frequently occurs within the nature on the platform, to reduce this first kind of golem is only natural. There is very little magic in it. Essence properly defined as the core of being if a thing, from which all other properties proceed. It is the root of the streams the manifestation of all physical objects, which gives them their form and decides their function. In creating a most sophisticated golem, this essence no longer belongs to the material itself, but is rather one imposed by the sorcerer. Most commonly, it is a word or symbol written on the material. The symbol alters the nature of the material and animates it in accordance with whatever principle the sorcerer has been chosen. Yet even now, it is no... Think, still no thinking being, but only a manifestation, manifestation of a principle, most often obedience or strength or something similar. Among the most scholarly, the essence of the object is also known as the substance, the attribute of which cannot subtra subtracted, cannot be subtracted, or else the object would cease to be itself. This distinction is relevant to both living and non-living things. It is what differentiates the gods, creatures of pure life, who exist with a total abundance of pure essence, pure life, and human beings, who have the same property of life but to a lesser degree, and beneath us the beasts, who have little, little at all. Only in the most sophisticated manifestation does the notion of essence evolve thought giving, giving to the golem not just motion, but the ability to determine its own thoughts and evaluate the world around it through anything but one core principle. Creations such as this are very, very rare. None have ever been, none have been produced in either of our lifetimes, and is, that is why the golem we're searching for is so significant. In myth, it is said that sorcerers have been known to animate a golem not with some foreign essence, but with their own. So they transfer so they transfer their own mind from their body into the golem. Still, to the best of my knowledge, this seems impossible, and I will not mention it again. But already I have gone on too long. You are fortunate. Few outside the academy know of these things, and in all honesty, I am surprised I have spoken at all. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me. <laughs> yes, well, I did not expect you to understand. All right, I hope did everybody take notes? This will be on the test on Friday. It's 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 thirty percent of your grade. Please please uh, please check back through the notes. The I will I have on my personal website. I have the uh, paperwork. You can spend ten dollars to get it. Um, this this will go on your exam. <laughs> that was a lot of shit. There is you are a cold man. There is much hateful in you, such as giving us long diatribes. Very hateful thing to do. But of it, I do not say how you're so different. I simply have much to do. That was very short. With the golden symbol, what will you do? I will return to the academy. You will never see me again. Okay. Sorry, I was dying. Dying, dying. Da, da. It's like a car. It's da. I hate this fucking place, don't you? You mean the bar? It's not so bad once you get used to the smell. 
No, not the bar. I mean the shit oval city. Of course I hit it, don't we all? It's very it's either stay here or jump off the edge of the platform. Ferdinand! Vasic, I thought I see the last few years ago. I'm not sure why you came back. You don't talk much. No one likes you to begin with. Fuck you, Ferdinand. <laughs> I go wherever I want to go. <laughs> you gotta keep in mind where you are where you aren't liked. No one wants you here at Corpse Center. That was a long time ago. Fuck you, Ferdinand. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't matter how long it's been. This place is a long memory. Talk to me like that again, I'll give you a reason to remember me. Okay, okay, I'm going. I was making a joke when I said when I said fuck you, Michelle, but honestly it seems like that's actually the way we're talking to people, so whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was daydreaming. Those who teach the most about humanity aren't always human. Oh yes, that's a good dog quote. The two look like they're, they're about to fight. This could get ugly. Let's get involved. Just because. The patron wanders from place to place, taking talking himself under his breath. Vasek has seen the man from time to time, but never known who he is or why he comes. He has been he had been here years ago before Vasek left the sink. As a surprise to see him here, still here now. The man is unkempt, perhaps insane, the kind no one would ever have a reason to speak to. So Vasek suppose he will never know what the man is mumbling about. You could just talk to him and see what he's mumbling about, if you want to. It's up here. Funny, see this room here. Vasek has never seen evidence of anyone using it. The Enclave. Oh, good. Where's the bro Where's the Brotherhood, though? I prefer them. Um. So, what do you guys think of this game? <laughs> it's definitely not perfect, but it has a few. It has a few interesting attributes. At the same time, I'm not sure it's really worth playing, but at the same time, I'm not really sure it's not worth playing. You have to be in a certain mood for this, I'd say. <laughs> I appreciate the good grammar, though. Honestly, I've played so many games with bad grammar, bad writing, that I do appreciate the effort put into the writing. Even if I'm not sure about the whole product. <laughs> like, I just... I, I guess maybe I'm just desperate for playing games on Halo for an hour that I actually know how to write English. Um, a hole, and Vasek has nearly stepped in it. Would have would be just what he needed to break his ankle in this miserable place. Everywhere the floor creaks as he walks in, and there are spirals visible along the walls. It was not like this in the eaves. Vasek didn't realize he'd gotten so used to it, but of course he had. Give enough time, it's possible to get used to anything, and to miss it when it's gone. <laughs> I love that we had a long diatribe over a missing plank in the wa in the floor. <laughs> Vasek picks up the wine jug, but it's empty. Damn it! What the hell are these called? Gourds? Vasek has forgotten, or he never knew. Either way, they don't look especially appetizing. Appetizing is two peas. Good try, though. Hurts a man's pride to search through a bag of trash. Vasek does it anyways, but finds nothing. The lid of the chest hangs unlocked and empty. Food, but all too raw to steal. The wine jugs are more tempting. Another wine jug without a cap, except Vasek excellently knocks it down as he steps forward. Fortunately, there's nothing inside. It would be a shame to waste it. There must be something wrong for him to be so clumsy like this. He can still fill it. The constant dull pressure behind his temples. He had been there for weeks now, never abating. So familiar he had ceased to notice it. It must be making him clumsy. He is better than this. He is truly. And the basket of rotted potatoes. The basket has seen better food kept in the kitchen. It must be this food was brought up here some time ago and forgotten. I'm surprised it's not, like, making flies happen. A broken wall here leads to the, to, into the room. Enter? Sure, what's in here? Fascinating to expect to see some, something worse in the locked room, or at least it's a surprise to see it fully furnished. It had been locked the last time Vasek came here, though he hadn't noticed the hole in the wall. Why is it locked? Vasek feels a momentary curiosity. Maybe something had happened here. Otherwise, it made no sense to shut up a perfectly good room. Forgot the word, too. But no, best to just take anything you can find and go. The satchel is still full, but nothing useful in it. Someone else must be staying here, though they're out now. Possibly even the bartender or one of the bodyguards. We're not a good person, we're just like, we're just going to run still. The creator put a lot of work... That is sure of all the text and lore, but it's not perfect, especially as graphical. The graphical design is ugly. Let's just be honest here, sadly. But this actually, I will use this game as an example, though. Um, when it comes to making a game, even in, like a grid-based game, like an RPG, um, in RPG Maker, it takes effort to make a game look visually appealing. It does take effort. Like even if you you need a you need a bunch of asses to break things up. Or you end up with things that don't look that great. Like, this room's okay, though. This room's all right. A hole in the wall, but no. It's not the mark of some fight of struggle. Or if so, there's no other traces as can see. If I went through this entire game, my voice would become hoarse because there's just so much dialogue. 
It's mostly interestingly written on, to be fair, besides for the Golem diatribe. The door is blocked by a large dresser. The inside is empty. The chest has been left unlocked. Take the contents. Old boots, dirty undergarments, and a cloth shirt. Everything you need in life. Can I use any of that? I guess not. Uh, you, I think you're right about the vendor trash. Yeah, look at that. These items are not showing up. Yeah, this must be vendor trash then. Okay. Or rather, vendor trash or vendor treasure when it comes to that hand. The bed is made, but badly. Someone has slept here recently. Okay. Ah! Oh. Just has been left unlocked. Take the contents. I got a bomb. <laughs> also, that's the... I guess this is where we're going to end it. What a weird game. It wasn't definitely not bad. It's not, it's not, it's definitely not fucking for everyone though at the same time. So what's it? Bandages, cures, bleeding, concussion, requires a full turn. Damage is all enemies. Human opponents may, may not evade. Heavy armor decreases evasion, but also damage. Okay. Quickening. A natural force of the blood. Revives one ally with penalty to all stats. Oh, okay, you do have allies in this, so you will get other party members in this game. Penalties increase with multiple uses. Okay. Weird. So it's a revive item, but it has side effects. Got it. Kind of makes sense, I guess. It's a pretty powerful thing. What's that pick for bandages? Uh, it's a horseshoe. <laughs> Actually, good point. What the fuck? Just apply this horseshoe to your wound. It's it's fine. It'll block it. Just loop it around. I actually feel like that might be a, a uh, item image error, <laughs> where he mixed up the image files possibly <laughs> it's fine you know lucky horseshoe heals you <laughs> it cures concussion instead of causing one which it probably would if you threw it at somebody um but yeah this hmm i'm not sure what to say about this game i don't think it's really worth buying for the average player but there might be those people out there that find this intriguing i kind of partly do like i partly get its style I partly get what it's doing, but the visual, the visual limitations of what was put together here, what was comprised, not for the enemy designs, because I think they're fine. Uh, actually, that was the main thing that appealed to me, um, as far as the visual design goes. But as far as the actual map design, it's really plain, overly, the same tile over and over again, very busy. It's not much to look at. This game is not a looker. This game is not a looker, but it has some interesting content to it at the same time. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely cut above a lot of RPG Maker games on Steam. Because a lot of them use uh, default assets. A lot of them are very lazy, badly written. So this definitely, unfortunately, I guess kind of unfortunate when you think about it, this game stands out. It's not really the best RPG, though. Uh, it's not really the best game, even amongst RPG Maker games, though. There's definitely better examples. Uh, even on Steam. So, yeah. This is a very much a... If you're in a quirky mood and this looks appealing, this might be worth a purchase. I don't think it costs that much on Steam. I'm not sure. You guys can look that up for me. Because I'm lazy. No, I'll do it. Whatever. Hold on. Let's take a look at the price right now. Pale City. Not actually released yet. Unlocks in 11 days. Not sure what the price would be. If they're asking for a fiver or something, that's not so bad. I'm not sure what the price will be, though. Hasn't actually released yet. will release in 11 days, so you're getting an early look. Um, I'm not sure if that means the final release will maybe have the graphics polished up a bit more. Possible. But I wouldn't know. I'm going to assume that what I'm playing here is pretty much the full game, like, as it's going to release, though. That was the Pal City. Not worth your time unless you're in a particular mood and you're a particular person. But... Not terrible either. <laughs>